Dade Pagaricha Dade Pagaricha Mongaka Kibata o pataleta Savasena Savasutuka o fer Ore di Puote o Genenki di Bua Kanakoya di Heto Lenaga de Gitaka di Heto Kibata o Surisa Mohaun and Wu Telezepe Empa Haile Netambu di Muyona Haile Netambu di Muyona Utarula ole mungaka, utarula ole le koko tolo loe kita yi koko tala kaona Chara yolo mufukeng, udule uge tata isite, uge isa makulung amatala I haven't heard what has been said and the way it has been described It is simple, you're talking about the mountains have an influence on the valleys The valleys have an influence on the river flows The river flows have an influence on, on, on the quality of, of, of water that the people are having, et cetera, et cetera. So all these things must be seen in, in, a, in an interconnected and inter, in, integrated way. We need approaches that will sustain, and by su being sustainable means that all these things are planned in harmony, in concert with each other, and having the farmer being listened to having the person, the individual, the individual organizations on the ground being listened to because they have the experience, they have the knowledge. We have to respect that as leadership. We should not have the arrogance of dictating what we think that they, should, they, they, are, they are wanting or needing. Well, I think one of the key messages uh, coming from, from, from the continent as well as what has happened in the last couple of days. Governance in the African context is a major bottleneck because governments, even individual governments, in Lesotho, in the region, in the continent, were not talking to each other. Ministries, Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, Fisheries, whatever, we are doing things in silos, let alone doing them collectively within the region. So it is extremely important that for us to continue to have a meaningful impact on the global stage, we need to be talking to each other long before we come to the conferences as a continent. Science equally needs to step out of the lab. Scientists, university professors, need to step out of the universities and really put what they've been researching into some tangible, practical approaches where a farmer, where a politician can digest and make a meaningful contribution to what research is saying. Because the research is very important, but then that has to be translated into something simple, tangible and edible for an individual, somebody walking in the streets of Lagos, in the streets of Maseru, in the streets of Warsaw. Otherwise, it will, become an, it will continue to, to be a purely academic exercise, which does not inform how then policy is formulated. Because without that information, the policymaker also needs to be mindful that they are not arrogant in how then, because having been elected does not mean that you are the beginning and end of knowledge. You need to be wide open with your eyes. You, you have to have- That's already going on. The Lame hasn't, for instance, kick-started these into process. These are very long, uh, long-standing, with a long history uh, processes. For instance, Africa had shipping lines in the past. There's, uh, there's in, since the 1980s, there's been a reduction in the number of uh, shipping lines that are African-owned or African-owned ships, apart from one or two countries, such as Liberia, for instance. Um, so the uh, the way forward is to uh, make sure that national level, there is more um, benefit, um, should we say, more priority given to maritime focused activities, but also a national level, more coordination to ensure that ultimately a, a more higher level concept of the blue economy uh, uh, it's translated into um, real benefits, an increase in GDP, for instance, because there are new industries, uh, an uh, increased workforce, uh, 
uh, maritime related as well. But like I say, we can get into the well, crucial point to make is that a common uh, nature to everything is going to effectively be enhanced here. There's a common realization of common problems, common solutions, and at a national level as well, that there needs to be a more comprehensive but coordinated uh, way forward for maritime policy. Um, effectively, because no state can do everything by itself. Um, states will have within their sovereign borders and, and according to their own uh, interests and policies, the creation of various activities. For instance, a, a country like Togo or a small maritime country is not going to prioritize building a navy, whereas a, a country which uh, has uh, shipping lines in the future will prioritize perhaps uh, the creation of a, a navy or uh, the ability to protect its maritime domain because um, that, that deri it derives a lot of wealth from that. Um, one point I'd like to stress is that the, uh, the enhanced measures envisioned are a bit vague. They, there's no need to effectively reinvent the wheel. Uh, a lot of potential institutions, a lot of potential organizations have already been proposed. Uh, for instance, in the, in the 2050 Africa's Integrated Maritime Strategy. Now, the Lomé Charter uh, doesn't mention those specifically in previous drafts. It did mention them. I'll give some examples coming up. But um, there is a there's a realization I think that needs to perhaps should we say a a better realization that uh, there's a lot of initiatives and institutions uh, nascent uh, inchoate uh, co coming forth, which uh, we need to encourage now as well at national but also continental level too, uh, cross sector multi level. It's an ambitious document as all maritime documents have been. Um, the AU will play a, a very big role in terms of coordination. It will host the secretariat envisioned for the, uh, the state parties to the Lomé Charter in the future. And also um, have a, a monitoring function as well, reports, for instance, uh, of state parties in terms of uh, their success in their implementation. The, um, the speech at the fifth, on the 15th was uh, by the chairperson in Costa San Adlimini Zuma was, uh, I found, very progressive. It um, highlighted and emphasized the important role of women in the blue economy and maritime security in the future, uh, not just at an entrepreneurial level, but at all levels, and uh, not just in terms of economics, but security as well. It also, interestingly, did not mention piracy once. Now, piracy is a major problem, uh, has been a major problem, could still be a major problem in the future if, uh, if conditions change. But the fact that uh, the focus was more on development, it was more on the kind of governance uh, requirements and also some suggestions, for instance, in terms of um, creation of African shipping, uh, emphasis on creating a skilled, trained, uh, large workforce uh, seafarers and maritime uh, uh, development of expertise in the future was very progressive. So I was very, I was very pleased to note that. Uh, the charter itself, the document that was eventually signed is, uh, is largely watered down, as most uh, international documents uh, tend to be. The kind of uh, obligatory language uh, is not there uh, for reasons of concern over potentially the impingement on sovereignty. So um, there, are, there were the removal of, as I said earlier, some key institutions which could have featured. Um, the AIMS strategy, for instance, uh, envisions having a, what's called an MIC2, a Maritime Information Coordination Center. Uh, this was something at some side events which was uh, noted in terms of the importance at the AU level of having a, uh, an information portal or an information um, center and uh, outputs. Now, this is something that's been proposed. It was previously in the Lomé Charter, it's now subsequently been removed. Uh, in favor of more just uh, general um, uh, states will endeavor to create systems. So there are some systems already envisioned. Um, so uh, it'd be good to see potentially if that will be resuscitated. Uh, there's also a lack of reference to uh, existing regional or international institutions in the charter. Uh, a major one at the regional levels, sub-regional levels, is the Yuande Code of Conduct and the Djibouti Code of Conduct. Um, now, those aren't, um, well, the Djibouti Code of Conduct is not specifically targeted at Africa. It is a Western Indian Ocean initiative. But the fact that uh, these don't appear in the Charter raises some questions about uh, 
whether they will be uh, continually encouraged or whether member states continue to see them as a, a useful way forward. Um, there's an initiative in Southern Africa called the Benguela Current Commission as well, which is a, an interesting uh, and potentially uh, innovative way forward in terms of thinking about what we need to protect and also the best way of creating international cooperation. I'm here talking here between South Africa, Namibia and Angola. Um, obviously, to create in the, the preamble of a charter, every initiative would be um, quite exhaustive. But, uh, but to, uh, to target a few important ones like that, would have been better uh, highlighted. And um, environmentally as well, an important initiative which has been neglected is the um, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, specifically number 14, which talks about ocean conservation. Now that does not feature the, um, the process of creating um, development goals at the UN is noted, but it is not developed. It does not feature later on in the other articles. Um, again, that's a, that's a major problem because um, it's, uh, all states have uh, committed at the UN level to this kind of uh, development goal. So to see it feature there would have been very important as a, uh, a reminder. Um, most things will have gone to the annexures. Now these annexures haven't been, or annexes haven't been included uh, in the final charter which has been uh, released or is available uh, because they still need to be developed. A lot of things will be, uh, have been moved to the annexes. So states, for instance, have signed in principle and uh, the follow-on process now of creating those annexes will result in potentially uh, more meetings, more um, more discussions on uh, on the nature of some key concepts. For instance, what a blue economy is. It's a major issue, which um, does not feature as well as it could in the charter. The charter doesn't, for instance, spell out the pathway to a blue economy or, or really um, create the kind of a uh, clear idea of what need is required to create blue economies at national and, and also a, a coordinative um, level as well. For instance, blue economies where um, there are transnational fishing so, uh, resources which are going to be tapped or protected, um, that needs to feature more as well. So that's something which features at a, a national level, but uh, going forward it would be helpful to have that uh, quickly created and, uh, and included too. Uh, definitions, uh, I, found, I find them to be a little, a little weak and a little uh, inadequate at times. But funnily enough, the, the definition section of the charter has increased from two pages to five pages, going to show just how many states and stakeholders, um, for how long we've been discussing maritime security and blue economy in a, a, perhaps at a, a more abstract level, and to actually pinpoint the real needs for what is required what everyone believes to be uh, falls under the tag of illegal fishing, for instance, um, is, is an important thing, uh, which uh, it features there, but uh, there are many other things as well. For instance, the definition of maritime security, um, which is, uh, let me just find it quick, uh, focuses on the uh, prevention and fight against all acts and threats of illicit acts against a uh, ship its crew and its passengers are against port facilities and infrastructure and, and the environment. Um, the kind of definition of maritime security going forward, which I started off this presentation and also which I think is, is most beneficial, is, uh, is one that not just protects against threats, but also creates enabling uh, conditions and not just for states to have security, but at a, at a sub-state level and a community level as well is to make sure that those who take to the sea, uh, who wish to derive benefit or a livelihood from maritime related activities are, uh, are enabled as well as protected against threats, whether they come from um, within a country or externally as well. Um, so LOME is not particularly human security focused, as again, we can understand that because it is a, a charter for states to go to go home and, and implement activities and create activities. But it would be, have been good to have seen those included there. The fact that they're not included, I think is a, a good point for a point of 